Australia's Northern Territory is home to some of the world's most precious examples of Aboriginal art. It's an ideal destination for both art experts and enthusiasts alike, with many art trails, community art centres and galleries available for visitors to experience this rich cultural heritage for themselves. Set in tropical gardens on the Darwin Harbour is this place, the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory. It houses many different collections, with one of the highlights being its indigenous art. We have a lot of bark paintings. We have a lot of objects that reference cultural practice and ritual and ceremony. But we also have artwork that exists in acrylic and canvas format. So we have a lot of contemporary canvases, a lot of photographic work, a lot of audio visual, a lot of installation work. And of course, this is what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people are doing today. For a lot of people, they might not know anything about Aboriginal people or their culture or, or Torres Strait Island people and their culture, but when they look at the artwork, they see this beautiful work and they begin to delve further. One of the amazing art pieces is a beautiful piece called Garrick, which is a bark painting by an Aboriginal artist from northeast Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. And the bark painting that she has done is a bark painting that references the universe in her own unique way using traditional ochres on a sheet of bark. So um, she tells the story of being a, a young girl and her father, her family, teaching her about the universe and the cosmology that relates to her area, her country. The gallery is also home to the Telstra National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Art Award, which over the past 25 years has showcased the best in contemporary Indigenous art. Another piece is a work that's been done by Alec Tupoti, a Torres Strait Islander artist who uh, has done an amazing five metre screen print um, of a work um, that depicts the mythology of his area. When you look at it, you can see this amazing narrative that is played out in screen print. And of course, the Torres Strait Islands uh, are very closely aligned to Papua New Guinea and also to Australia. And it is a unique cultural block because Torres Strait Islander people, of course, are the other indigenous population in Australia. I'd really encourage people to come and have a look at indigenous art here in Australia. It's an opportunity for you to see not only the very best of visual art practice here in Australia, but to get a glimpse of the history, the long history of indigenous culture. There's an amazing variety of art here and they're all united by certain qualities. They provide a window onto Aboriginal culture, and each one has its own unique story to tell. But the art in the Northern Territory extends far beyond the confines of the galleries. With 5,000 rock art sites on record, and an estimated further 5,000 sites thought to exist within the region, the rock walls and shelters of Kakadu National Park and neighbouring Arnhem Land have been canvases for generations of Aboriginal artists. This is amazing, we've got a whole gallery of rock art here. Where are we, Brian? We're at the main gallery at Ubiya Rock Art Sites, and if you look up there, you can see a whole range of rock art from the X-ray style paintings, which Kakadu is famous for, right through to the early Mimi style paintings, which is also up there as well. And there is an awful lot of rock art all around this area. That's absolutely right. Let's go check out some more. Let's go. Brian, laws to live by, what's that all about? Well, we talked before about how Aboriginal pe people painted their mythological stories on these, these uh, rock art sites. Well, they also painted their laws here. And this is an example of one of the laws. For example, here you see a scene here where there's people fighting with spears and woomeras and so on and so forth. And what this is all about is a young girl broke the law by eating fish at a too young an age. And because she broke that law, she was punished by her uh, husband's family and then her family felt she was punished too severely and that caused a big fight between the, the two different groups. So that's the reason that uh, the law should be respected. So a lot of the art around here does actually tell a story? Yes, that's correct. Arnhem Land itself is like stepping back in time. You go into Arnhem Land, it's got some of the world's very best rock art sites. You can access the, uh, a couple of places in there. You can join a tour with an Aboriginal guide, which is great. Now we're at the top of Inulak Hill. What are we looking at? Now we're looking at a rock art 
the fresh waters like fish, gulls, turtles, pythons, or a magpie geese, turkey hiding somewhere, freshwater crocodile and the echidnas. Now looking at them, they seem almost skeletal like, like you can look through them. Why is that? What's it called? Actually, when you're looking at this a large freshwater fish, you can see the inside, the bones, and the guts inside. That's why now everyone's calling an X-ray. So X-ray style. Is it, did it kind of almost serve then as a, as a lesson to people, or, or it was teaching people as to what they should go out and catch? Exactly. Whether in a gallery or in the natural world, Aboriginal art in the Northern Territory offers a unique artistic experience and provides an outstanding record of human interaction with the environment over tens of thousands of years.